This is a strength of material problem where we are working with plane strain. Okay, we are given a normal strain in the X and the Y and shearing strain XY, which is uh, 200 microns. From these three, we can go ahead and create our state of stress. Write all this information here. And what they want us to do is to rotate this 25 degrees clockwise. In this video, I'm going to go over two different ways how we can solve this problem. One of it is by using the formulas that uh, we have, three large formulas, simply plugging in and uh, finding our values. And the second way is which uh, calculating everything through Mohr's circle. Okay, first let's calculate our normal strain in the X after we rotated our state of stress. This is the formula. Simply we're going to plug in the values that we are given and we can calculate our strain. Same thing we're going to do for normal strain in the Y prime, in the new orientation after we rotate it. This is our long formula. Plug in, we have our values. Same thing we have for our shearing strain in the new orientation. This is our formula. We can plug in and find our values. Now if we wanted to put in a Excel sheet, let's say, and calculate all this stuff. Uh, this is the easier way to plug in and have the computer calculate it for us. But who can remember these long equations? After a month or two, if you have to recall it, nobody would be able to remember it. So, this is why we have the second method through which we can uh, calculate these, and that's Mohr's circle. We are able to remember it just by relying on our uh, trigonometric and geometry knowledge. Okay, here the very first thing that we should do is that uh, divide the shearing strain that we are given by 2 and therefore we're going to get 100 microns and that is because when we work with, work with uh, more circle we know that the axis is the normal strain and here we have the shearing strain divided by 2. This is where we rotate this up here. This is where we rotate down here. This is just the uh, rules of the setup for the Mohr circle. Now, if we take a look at our state of stress, we can see that in our X orientation, we have negative 800. Now, we're going to come on the normal strain axis, and we're going to go to negative 800 which will be right here negative 800 let's put it as a point negative 800 now we need to go up or down all right so let's take a look at our shearing strain the shearing strain is 100 positive going this way so to rotate in the same direction as this state of stress would go we would come to our more circle and let's see can we put it should we go upwards no my rotation is clashing with this one so i can go here so therefore we're gonna go downwards to match this rotation therefore negative 800 and downwards for the 100 shearing strain that's why i drew my uh x point down here and there you go this would be the negative 100 down here so this is my x point the original now for the y in our y direction we can see that we have positive 450 so we're gonna come from the origin up positive 450 this is right here so therefore this point 450 and positive 100 and we can verify again going upwards from the 400 to get to the 100 we have 100 here on the top on my state of stress we have rotation this way right 
So to match the rotation here, we can see that if we bring this rotation here, that would mean up here. If this is how it matches down here, it wouldn't match anymore because it would clash with this one. So therefore we mark it upwards. Now we have our two original locations, X and Y, right here. We can connect them with a line and where it intersects the axis, that will, will be our uh, strain average. Epsilon average. And that's what we're going to go ahead and calculate next. So our average normal strain is equal to normal strain in the X plus normal strain in the Y divided by 2. Plug in our values and there we have it. Negative 175 microns. Negative 175. So this is our uh, epsilon average. Now let's take a look at what will be the triangle that we're going to apply our trigonometric knowledge to. So we need a right triangle. So we can either pick this one down here or this one up here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this one up here. I'm going to shade it in just so we can see it better. So there's no confusion. What are we working with? So this is our right triangle that's going to help us calculate our new values. Next, let's take a look at what they want us to do. They want us to rotate 25 degrees clockwise. We know that when we bring this value into more circle, that means we have to double it. So we're working with 2 theta, which will be 2 times this, which gives us a 50 degrees rotation in clockwise. So therefore, this orientation, the xy that we have right here, will be rotated this way 50 degrees. So that's going to come somewhere like this. And this will be my new state of stress, the orientation of my new state of stress. So y, this will be my y prime, and this will be my x prime. Now I'm going to take this triangle, and I'm going to redraw it and calculate its a hypotenuse. There it is. So, my triangle from here, I took it out. We know that it's this side of it is 100. We, are, we have that information, so I wrote here 100. Down here is 625, which we can simply calculate from 450 to negative 175, we have a distance of 625. So we have a right triangle, we have our theta 1, which is from the axis to our original location, and R will be our hypotenuse. I like to put this line over here, so I can remember that my triangle, the tip, is not at 0, it's at negative 175. This will be useful in a little bit, we'll see. So, applying the right triangle, we can calculate our hypotenuse, and we can find that it's 632.9 microns. Now also, let's find theta 1 with inverse tangent, 100 over 625 is going to give us an angle of 9.09 .09 degrees. Now, continuing with the angle calculations, let's rotate the 50 degrees that they asked us clockwise from this angle we're going clockwise so therefore minus 50 degrees we are able to find our new location which is at negative 40.91 degrees now this is my new location after we rotate it down here so we can see that my, tri uh, the, my new right triangle will be below the axis and will be this right here. And that's what I drew up right here. We don't really need this, just as an illustration so we can remember where we are right now. So, to find our epsilon in the x prime orientation, uh, we're gonna use cosine we're going to need this side right here. 
and this side right here. So for epsilon prime, we're going to need this side. So R cosine theta 2, it will be 632.9 times cosine of my angle. I'm going to use just the positive, 40.91, and it's going to give me 478. Now, 478 is this distance, and this should remember us that we are not from starting from zero. So therefore, negative 175, and we will going towards the x, which is in the negative direction, so starting negative 175, minus the distance that we found here, so we're going down this way, and we're going to be able to find negative 653 microns, the same as we found it right here. Now, epsilon in the uh, y prime direction, this is very easy, since we have r, all we have to do is go in this direction from our average, which is negative 175, plus the distance that we found for our triangle, 478 microns, that's going to give us 303 microns, just like here. Now, the last step, we're going to calculate our shearing strain. For this, we have to remember that in Mohr circle, we have it, uh, the shearing strain divided by 2. So, by calculating first, we will find the shearing strain divided by 2. From this triangle, we are able to use sine, and we're going to find this uh, distance. So, r times sine theta 2. Plug in the values, and we are able to find negative 414.5. This one does start at zero. We are on this axis, so we don't have to worry about uh, changing it from zero like we had to for epsilon average. So therefore, we have shearing strain divided by two equals 474.5 micron. Now, I'm gonna cover this middle section so it's uh, easier to see. We have this equaling this. So to find this, we're simply gonna multiply by two and there's our final value for our new shearing strain in the new position, which is negative 829 microns, just like here.